Hi, my name is Professor Dan Kernler with uh, Elgin Community College. This is part of my uh, series of videos about statistics designed to go along with Math 120, which is our statistics course here at the college. In this first section, we're just going to do, we're going to work along with the textbook that we use. Uh, we're going to introduce what the broad concept of statistics is. We're going to have a little vocabulary as well. Um, and there are going to be some terms you may want to write down, make a list of, uh, maybe look at the handout that go along with this PowerPoint, make some notes for those. So let's talk about what statistics is. A lot of us, when we have an, uh, an idea, when we first think about statistics, we, we think about what a layman might think. It's just those numbers that describe things. But we're actually talking about the whole process of statistics. So I'm going to kind of give you a visual here and how it aligns with our course. So. The basic thing that we start with in statistics is we have a question that we want to answer. And so we're going to talk about that in chapter one, identifying the question. Maybe it's an experiment we want to design, maybe it's a survey. So we're going to talk about that in chapter one. Second is we collect some data. So we'll talk about what a sample is and how do we, how do we, uh, how do we identify uh, a sample that represents our population and how do we collect that data. So that's also in chapter one. And then we'll organize and summarize that, make some graphs, maybe do some statistical um, calculations with some, excuse me, with a program or calculator, etc. So that's all um, just summarizing, not making any conclusions. And then finally, the meat of the course, the really good stuff that we're going to get to at the very end, well, not the very end, but toward the last, say, third of the semester is inferential statistics, where we come to a conclusion. Um, you can see chapter four kind of overlaps there. Chapter four is we talk a little bit about um, bivariate data where you have a kind of X and a Y. And there we do a little bit of graphing and calculations and we also do some inference there as well. Um, and so that's kind of the layout for the semester. And that's what we think about the process of statistics is this whole process where we have a question, we collect some data to answer it, we summarize that data either numerically or in a graph. And then we make some inferences, we draw some conclusions based on that. All right, next, a uh, little bit of vocabulary here. I used these in the previous slide, talking about population versus sample. Population is every individual that we might be looking at. So if we're looking at um, Americans, the population is every single American. When we look at a sample, that's a selection from that population. When people do phone surveys for uh, an election. Uh, they have a sample. Maybe they have a list of phone numbers and they're randomly selecting numbers from that list. However, they're doing that sample, but they're not asking every single American. They're selecting a sample. So I have this little note here about consider this class. We look at our class of statistics students. Is it a population or a sample? Now, this, this isn't an interactive lecture, so you can't really answer. You can think about it to yourself. Um, the answer is really that it depends. <laughs> depends on the context. So if I am thinking about, well, I want to look at students at Elgin Community College. In that case, this class would just be a sample, not a random sample either, actually, because um, students taking the same class have some common characteristics. Um, so in that case, we could consider it a sample. On the other hand, if I'm looking at online Math 120 students, well, I'm the only one that teaches that this particular semester. And so this class, this semester, that would be the entire population. So context really matters on whether a group of individuals is a sample or a population. All right, let's talk a little bit about what a statistic is. Uh, in our class, that name, that word actually has a very specific meaning. So if we look at a population, here I've got a population of people, my fancy people drawing here. We select from that a sample. So if I calculate something about a population, which we usually can't do, that's called a parameter. So that's like the average age of all ECC students. When I calculate something from a sample, it's called a statistic. So again, um, our parameter could be the average age of all students. The sample, uh, the statistic might be the average age of a sample of 50 students. When we look at a statistic, we're just describing the average that we calculated from our sample. That's called descriptive statistics. That's just factual. What was the average of our sample? Inferential is when we're drawing some conclusions based on that. So descriptive would say, oh, the average age of students in this sample is 23. Inferential would then be saying, well, 
based on that, I would say that the average age of all ECC students is 23. So descriptive is just factual based on data that's been collected. Inferential is extending that, kind of drawing a conclusion and extending that to the greater population. Incidentally, in case you're interested, the average age is actually closer to 28, 27, 28. All right, uh, let's talk about types of data, types of variables. So there are two general categories, qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative, we think about the roots here, quality and quantity. So quality is just descriptive. Um, hair color, um, political party, letter grade for a course, something like that. Just qualitative, just describing them. Quantitative then is a numerical measure, some numerical measure, number of siblings, height, etc. Within quantitative, we have two general categories. We have discrete variables, which are essentially variables that you can count, one, two, three, four, etc. You can have halves and quarters. Um, that's fine. Um, one example I've talked about in another context is shoe size. So shoe sizes, depend if you're looking at like the American system, come in halves, but you can't get a 13.7 shoe size, right? They have six, six and a half, seven, seven and a half, etc. So the shoe sizes, not foot length, foot length would actually not be discrete, but shoe sizes are discrete because they are there's a discrete certain number of them. Continuous variables can really it's hard to summarize them consistently, but they can be any value within an interval. So um, height is a good example that I like to use. So height, when I say how tall I am, I say, well, I'm, I'm about 6'3", and, and I'm using that word about there because I'm not exactly 6 feet 3 inches. I remember trying to check it precisely at one point, and I was like 6'2 and 7 eighths. Um, but that's not exactly it either, right, because that 7 eighths is rounding. If I could zoom in closer and get even more precise, uh, I could get even more detailed. And, and I'm really limited by the accuracy of my instrument. Really, even though we measure our height in inches and you think, well, I'm counting inches, it's, it's rounding. Uh, length of time is another good one that's continuous. You might say, well, this video is interminable and whatever, no, it's like, you know, 10 minutes and five seconds long, but that's not exactly right. There's some millisecond, microsecond, nanosecond, whatever, more precision there. So time is another one that's actually a continuous random variable because you're rounding. Kind of related to this, we have levels of measurement kind of with precision here. So a nominal level of measurement, what we say nominal, is just a category. Um, so I've got some examples there, eye color, gender, political party, that's nominal. That's just categories, there's not any ranking, they're just different categories. Um, ordinal is categories, but now they have order. So like course letter grade, um, it's just a category, A, B, C, D, but A is higher than B, which is higher than C, etc. Um, a Likert scale, whether you agree or neutral or you disagree, uh, educational experience, master's degree, bachelor's degree. A master's degree is more education than a bachelor's degree, so there's that order, but it's still just a category. Interval now is quantitative, um, but ratios don't have meaning. So if we look at intelligence quotient, uh, it's a very flawed measure, by the way, um, but it's a, it's a numerical measure of some type of intelligence. Um, but if you say that, so if you look at a ratio, so somebody who's an IQ of 80 versus someone who's an IQ of 160, does that mean they're twice as smart? What does twice as smart mean? There's no way to really, to really measure that, that ratio. But you could say an interval, like there's 20 percentage points higher, 20 percentage points higher. Um, temperature, same thing. If we're looking at degrees, say we pick degrees Fahrenheit. Um, is 60 twice as warm as 30? Uh, it's 30 degrees warmer, and then 90 is 30 degrees warmer than 60. So that, that interval has meaning, but the ratio doesn't really have meaning. Is 90 really twice as warm as 45? Um, so that, that ratio doesn't have meaning. And the last one then is a ratio where those ratios now have meanings. So like distance is a good one. Distance you commute to school or commute to work. If someone drives twice as far, then they literally do drive twice as far. Um, if you're looking at a business and you have a number of clients, if somebody has four times as many clients as somebody else, then that, that ratio uh, means something. And also zero has meaning. So distance commuting 
Uh, if you're taking this class online and it's the only class that you're taking online or the only class you're taking, your distance commuting is zero and that has meaning. That, that means you don't commute. You don't take any classes on campus. Uh, you could have zero clients. And so those last two, I think, are the hardest ones to really wrap your head around, but those are, those are some examples. So um, one final note here, as you look at this scale, the further down you go in the scale, that's more precise level of measurement. Nominal at the very top is just categories, and then ratio at the beginning, at the very bottom, that's the most precise where the ratios have meaning, intervals have meaning, there's an absolute zero, that's the most precise. All right, so let's wrap this up. Uh, key points here from this section, we've got this population versus sample, where the population is everybody and then sample is a small subset. We have parameter versus statistics. So when I calculate something about a population, that's a parameter, um, which we often don't know, incidentally. Um, but when I calculate something about a uh, sample, it's a statistic. And then we have these types of data, qualitative, quantitative, and then within the quantitative, we have discrete and continuous. And then finally, levels of measurement. We have nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. So that's it. Um, take a look at the screen. I, I'm going to try to get some links above so you can check and get the, uh, the next video. You should be able to click on that or it should come up. Probably uh, YouTube will probably recommend it. Uh, thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe, that's fine. If you want to comment below, uh, it's very easy to do. Um, you can actually just type in, um, you can write anything there, and if you want to comment something at a particular time, you just type in that time, like if it's at 6 minutes and 23 seconds, you just type in 6 colon 23, uh, and YouTube will automatically link to that. So, thanks for watching.